All right, are we on? Are we live? Oh, yeah, all the way live. All right. Good evening. Hope you all are having a good day. And if not, I hope it gets better from this point forward. Uh, my name is Vince Stubchuck. For those of you that don't know me, part of the teaching team, and uh, thankful for that. And the study tonight is titled Sincerity or Hypocrisy. You know, we're largely focusing just on uh, hypocrisy, but I always like to contrast things like that. You know, you got one thing that's good and one thing that's bad, right? And a as with any person on this earth, you know, we got a good side and we got a bad side, don't we? Hypocrisy destroys our testimony as Christians because people can't take it seriously if they hear one thing and they see another. Sincerity towards God strengthens our testimony because it's pure, it's honest, it allows God to have influence in our lives. And with that influence, we draw people to God. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 through 20, it says, Even so, Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. We're never going to see anybody saved or bear fruit that remains if we live like hypocrites. And isn't that what Jesus called us to do? That we'd bear fruit? fruit, much fruit, and that that fruit would remain. Amen. It's one of the greatest obstacles for people who are seeking God when they look at people who call themselves Christians and they see that they're everything that they don't associate with God. Isn't that, isn't that like the biggest turnoff in the world for people who are seeking God? It, was a, it's, it hindered me. It got in my way. How can you take somebody seriously if they're not living what they claim to be living? Amen. People come to God because they can't find the answers in this life, can they? They can't find a psychologist. They can't find a teacher. They can't find a college professor to give them what they need because our problems run a lot deeper than that. And the only thing that's going to be able to answer those problems, right, is God. When, when Jesus walked up to the man in, in was the Garden of Gergesenes, they called him Legion, for we are many. Did he give him drugs to deal with all of his uh, issues? How about, how about counseling? Okay. Let's give you a year's worth of counseling and see if we can get you out of this. You know, go see this rabbi over here and talk to him for a few weeks on end. No, he just simply casts the spirits out of them. Who else can do that? We could do that if we're sincere. God can do that through us if we're sincere. Matthew 23, 27 to 33. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. That's the main scripture for tonight. You're like whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You know, he told him at one point, he says, you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. When he's made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. I thought these guys were the religious leaders of the day. They were. Everybody was looking at them, supposing that this is going to get them closer to God, and, and, and they were doing anything but getting people closer to God. He says, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, and you don't go in yourselves. And you know what? If we're not sincere towards God, we could find ourselves doing the exact same thing. And if you want to get on God's bad side, start feeding them bad information. Start leading them in a, in, down that path of hypocrisy. You will get on God's bad side very
very, very, very quickly. You know, I found myself being hypocritical at times, right? How many of us here? Say one thing, do another thing, right? Isn't that what it means, hypocrisy? <clears throat> we all know that looking good and being too, being good, we all know that looking good and being good are two different things, right? Everybody, what was Satan's big downfall? Well, he wanted that image of God, didn't he? He said, I'll be like the most high. And God struck him down in a moment, hard. Like, like nothing has ever been struck down. He has no power compared to God. He has nothing. He has nothing compared to God. Amen. The Bible says every good and every perfect gift cometh down from above from the Father of lights and who knows no darkness or shadow of turning. No variableness or shadow of turning. So, you can take God for face value. If he tells you something, you can count on it. And likewise, if the devil tells you something, you can bet the farm that there's always going to be a lie mixed in with it to deceive you. And the same thing for anybody that's following him. And there's been times when all of us have been deceived by the devil. Even today, even as Christians, right? King Saul, he fell, right? King David, he fell, right? One got back up, the other one didn't. If people perceive somebody to be virtuous, they often can't help but respect that person, right? Virtue's a, an admirable trait, isn't it? People have an admiration for virtue. And the word virtue means moral excellence, modesty, purity, inherent power, even as Jesus had, right? When he, you know, the virtue went out of him to heal the woman with the issue of blood. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Well, if we're following Christ, don't we have access to that same power? How many of us have seen somebody healed or seen ourselves healed? How many of us have seen somebody come back, fallen from grace to come back to God? Right? That's a lot of power. The Bible says, if you've got faith as a grain of mustard seed, you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it should be done unto you, and nothing should be impossible unto you. Well, our faith starts out small, and then we grow it over time. And eventually, you see those mountains moved. And you know what's harder to move than a mountain? Somebody's heart. On the opposite end of the spectrum, hypocrisy. It's a pretense of having virtuous character, moral or religious beliefs or principles that one does not really possess. Trying to look like something we're not. Trying to present that image, but... They're not deserving of that image. They've done nothing to, to, to be honest or sincere or pure about the image they're presenting. And like I said, we've all been there at times. All of us want to look good, don't we? Nobody wants to be thought of as being like a low life, dishonest, uh, reprobate, or, or any of those things, right? You don't want to be thought of as not being virtuous. I don't think anybody wants to be thought of that way. You know what? The, the most wicked people on this earth thought they were doing things that were virtuous. Didn't they? They wanted that image, but they had nothing that contributed to that image at all. Anybody that was looking at them realistically could realize that what they were was anything but virtuous. And really, it just stems from pride. You know, to be... To be hypocritical, it just stems from pride because it's, it's trying to present an image of something that we're not. From the thesaurus, you know, words that are similar to hypocrisy, deceit, dishonest, fraud, insincerity, mockery, pretty strong words. And Jesus very much spoke against it. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is of the leaven of the scribes and Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Okay, hypocrisy, we're going to go into this part of the study. Hypocrisy, sending the wrong message. Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. In the meantime, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of Pharisees, 
which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. The true nature of people is always going to get exposed at some point. You know, you know, how, how do some of those old sayings go? You know who your friends are when you're down at your lowest point? Isn't that when you find out? How they say, you won't find out, right? You're going to find out at some point in your life who your friends really are. You're going to find out who really has your back and who doesn't have your back. But people sure like to make a show out of it before that point comes, don't they? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'll smile on your face and then stab you in the back with the other hand. But once people become aware of that in others, once they see that hypocrisy, once they become aware of it, they don't look at that person the same way anymore, do they? The scribes and Pharisees absolutely hated when Jesus pointed out what manner of people they were. They could not stand being exposed. And isn't that like the world we live in today? You see the people on TV, you see the politicians, you see these famous people, and the minute that you find out that they're not quite what you thought they were, whoo, they get find that defensive posture and just try to protect the image that they thought they were projecting to you. Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 to 24. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore then I be single, the whole body should be full of light. But if then I be evil, the whole body should be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. If, if our eye be evil, and the word evil means always looking at things in a hurtful or in an unthankful way. Yeah, you ever come across somebody who's just, just miserable, constantly complaining about every single thing nonstop? If your eye be evil. Oh, no, that, that person, you know, they see something good and they, and they one of them they call good evil and evil good. No, nah, they're not really as good as they claim to be. They look at something that's good and they just find a way to put it down. They're just miserable constantly, and that's all they're sowing is misery, hate, anger, uh, bitterness. And, it aff- and, and if, if we're like that, it affects everything that we do. It affects every action that we take. It's like a poison mixed in with a meal. And that can pollute others. Our, you know, our ability to influence people as Christians, you know, they look to us for answers because they see us living for God. But if you've got this bitterness inside of you, if you've got this poison inside of you, if you've got this anger or hatred for people that you keep under the surface, it will come to the surface. That's why you've got to find a way, that's why we have to find a way to weed it out. It can pollute others. You know, the Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. But to those that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their, what? Their heart, their conscience, their mind, it's defiled. It's just a little leaven leavens a whole lump. I, I wondered what that word single means, you know, if your eye be single. And I never took out the time to really look it up. And so I looked it up this time, and it just means simple. Which there's not in which there's nothing complicated or confused, clear, whole. If your eye be single, if you be focused on the prize. If you focus on God, if you then be risen with Christ, set your affection on things which are above and not on things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Titus chapter 1, 15, 16. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and every good work reprobate. Now we have to, the whole point of these studies is so that we'll examine ourselves and say, am I like this? Is this me? Oh no, I can't be that evil. I'm not like those scribes and Pharisees. I didn't want to nail Jesus to the cross. What well, you already did once with the way you were living before. And that's still part of us, right? 
That's still part of our, our nature. I mean, we buried it, but the memory of that, right? We know where we came from. And we could return to that if we don't constantly go to God in prayer, in fasting, in labor of love, in fellowship, in study. We could end up just like we were before, right? When the unclean spirit's gone out of a man, he walketh about dry places seeking rest and finding none. And he says to himself, I'll return to the place from whence I came. And when he comes back, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. And then he brings back seven spirits more wicked than himself. And the last state of that man is worse than the first, or woman. And I've seen that. That's scary. When you, when you see somebody end up in that frame of mind, you're like, it hurts. You know, first of all, it hurts to see somebody that you call a brother or sister in faith turn their back on God. But then to watch them go down that, that spiral where they've delivered themselves unto Satan. <laughs> right? Painful just to watch it. Under the pure, all things are pure. They look at things through a single eye. They look for the good in things, right? Doesn't the Bible say, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you? So if you're going to be thankful for everything, well, what did Job say when he lost everything to his wife? And she said, curse God and die. He said, shall we receive good only at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil also? All this did not Job sin, charge God foolishly, nor sin with his lips. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 not, and through 9. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man shall, soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If, if we sow to the flesh, how are we going to bear good fruit in others? How are you going to give people something that actually is meaningful in God's eyes? You can't. You can't, you can't feed your flesh and then expect to bear spiritual fruit in yourself or in others. It isn't going to happen. It's impossible. And eventually, it's going to become more than just that. It's going to become known. And that hypocrisy is going to become apparent. So... This portion of the study is called, In What Ways Are We Hypocritical? Again, this is a, about self-examination. This isn't a message to the world out there. They're not trying to live like Christians. We are. And it's important. The image that we present to other people is important. It has to be sincere. It's not just an image that you're carrying around like, like putting on a suit, right? You can take the suit off, right? It's something you carry with, with you 24-7, you know? Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, the, the, the fruits of the Spirit. Those are the things that, that will make you sincere, that show, that, will, that you can give to other people, and it will bear fruit, right? Fruit will bear more fruit. Good fruit. Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 31. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go... Go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. I've been like that sometimes. He came to the second and likewise he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him the first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Right? He was talking to the spiritual leaders at the time, wasn't he? You know, it's funny. They knew the answer to the question, but they didn't want to do it. Right? Said they wouldn't even lift one of their fingers to move the burdens that they'd place on other men. That's, that's not the way to be. You ever see somebody like that at work? They're good at giving orders, but they don't want to get anything done themselves, right? Or when you were in the Navy, for some of us that were in the military, or in any avenue of life, 
You know, we've always seen people who just kind of hide off in a corner and they don't want to do their part. But they always got something to say. One said, one son said he would do as his father asked and he did not. You know, how often have we done the same thing to God? <laughs> how often have we done that to leaders in the church? Sure, I'll be there. Saturday morning. Nobody shows up. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. I'm only going to read a part of this, but you can write in your notes 1 through 10 just to get the whole story. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Could you imagine this happening today? It could. We do serve the same God, don't we? You know, the same God that wiped out whole nations in the Old Testament, that's the same God today, the same God that destroyed the earth with the flood. Why? Always the same thing. Sin, sin, more sin. People just ignoring him. But hey, they, they all want the image of being good, right? They all want the image of being virtuous, moral, upright. You know, how many, how many times, how many times have, you know, in, in it, with the humblest of attitudes, you try to approach somebody, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, you know, and you try to address the situation only to find them get on the defensive, Right? Now, sometimes people, you know, if they're humble about it, they'll take the advice, right? I always want to keep an open mind about the way people perceive me. If they come up to me and they say, hey, you know, I saw you doing this, man, and I'm just kind of wondering why. I want to keep an open mind because that, that image that I present to others, the Bible says, let not your good be evil spoken of. So if you're doing something that looks questionable, or if you find yourself in a place that's questionable, or if you you're doing something that people don't associate with Christianity, don't you want to know about it? That's part of being sincere. That's part of putting away the hypocrisy in our own lives. Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to the Holy Ghost. They wanted that image of being generous, didn't they? Right? Yeah. Right? It wasn't just the lie, but it, but it was the same thing that God cast Satan out of heaven for. He lifted himself up with pride and said, I'll be like the Most High. They wanted that image of being virtuous, being generous. Oh, yeah, we sold the land for this much. Oh, what a bunch of great people, right? Because Jesus sat across the treasury at one point to watch people giving, right? They saw that. Other people saw that. And those that, were, that had much, they gave much, right? And then the widow comes by and gives two mites, and he said, she gave more than all of you, Right? So it was a visible thing. It was, it was, it was noticed. And as an eyes and fire, they, they were noticed. Oh, wow, man, look what they gave, right? They sold this. They, everybody knew it was their land, right? They knew it was their possession or whatever it was. And, but they kept back part of the price. It doesn't matter how much, because they promised it all, right? And that's what, and that's what people were doing at that time. And they were doing it, most everybody was doing it out of sincerity, Right? They wanted to give to the church. They wanted to give to the cause of Christ. They wanted to see the gospel go forward. Right? And the Bible says money answers all things. This isn't a tithes and offers Bible study, but money answers all things. You know, we used to have, pick up kids over at that Whispering Oaks, and we'd have to have a bus and vans, and you know, you got to keep it gassed up, oiled up, tires. You know, during the winter time, maybe you got to throw in a snow tire. You got to do some ma extra maintenance on it. Whatever. It all takes money, 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 money. It takes money to keep the building open and the lights on. It takes money for people here to own a vehicle and to 
drive somebody to church, right? Or to bring somebody over to your house and entertain a guest, put some coffee on, give them a meal, right? Ananias and Sapphira, they're greedy, they were hypocritical, and it's, it's, it's like stolen valor, right? We've all heard that one before, right? Anybody know what stole, stolen valor is? Right? Somebody tries to pretend they're like a, a war veteran or something. They maybe put one of those little, put one of those Medal of Honor badges on, trying to pretend they're something that they're not. And man, when you get called out for that, oof, it, it's not good. When, when the people that have done that get exposed, every, everything they work for it comes crashing down in a moment. And their image is tarnished for the rest of the days on this earth as far as most of the world's concerned. The reward of sincerity towards God, right? What, what, what is sincerity? Sincerity is honesty, purity, without corruption. It's something you can count on, right? If somebody's sincere, you can count on it. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. And seeing the multitudes, he went into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Doesn't this sound like somebody that's sincere? <laughs> you go through all of this here. Blessed are they that mourn, right? Blessed are the meek, humble. Blessed are they mourn. What, what are you mourning for? Should mourn, mourn, mourning over the type of person I am sometimes. You know, Paul, oh, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You know, so with so with my flesh, I serve the law of sin and death, but with my mind, I serve the law of Christ. You know, it's always an uphill battle to, to serve God because you will fight yourself more than anything. Right? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's not easy, is it? Especially if somebody d does you dirty, in something that's very, very near and dear to you, right? If somebody touches something that you value greatly and they do you wrong, they say the wrong words, right? Talk about the uh, contentions are like the iron bars of a castle. <laughs> you offend somebody. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. These are the attributes of somebody that is sincere. The reward of being sincere towards God are all these blessings. It pointed them all out in there, these, these, these ten verses. You know, blessed are they, blessed are they, for they shall be the child, called the children of God. Is that a big deal? <laughs> to not be a child of God and then all of a sudden to be a child of God? That's a big deal. That's what we did when we got baptized in Jesus' name. We became the children of God because we put on Christ. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in a house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our sincerity towards God allows us to be the light of the world. You're not going to shed any light if you don't have it from God. You're not going to shed one little bit of light. Not one bit of understanding is going to come out of you to somebody to get any closer to God. Jesus said that we're his friends if we do whatsoever he commanded us. We have to be sincere. If we want the blessings of God, you know, then we have to pursue after godly things. He that sows to the flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. He that sows to the spirit shall the spirit reap 
life everlasting? We can't give somebody life if we're not living life ourselves. First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Behold what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Sincerity. The world doesn't know God, so a lot of times we could feel like we're alone, right? Sometimes it's a struggle. When you look at what's going on in the world and all the turmoil, sometimes it's just a struggle just to be separate, just to be not a part of what's going on, you know, because there's something inside of us that longs for, for friendship with the world, doesn't it? We want to be close to people. We don't want them to be outcasts. But yet, the Bible says they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. There's a sincerity in that towards God. There's very much a sincerity in that. And it's something that God honors. It says, be called the sons of God. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. We have this hope because God gave us the eyes to see it. And because of that, we're his children. Last scripture tonight. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We started off believing in God and we took that first step when we got baptized. But then from that point forward, add to your faith virtue and the virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance and the temperance patience. And the list goes on and on and on. These are things that, remember that faith as a grain of mustard seed? These are the things that build that faith. These are the things that bring us closer to God. These are the things that show our sincerity towards God when we grow these things in our life. And as a result of it, it says you'll neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will bear fruit for God. Thank you for listening. God bless you.